Welcome to part 3 of the Ritopo Academy. Yes, part 3. So if you haven't watched part 1 and part 2, I recommend you do that first. In part 1, we cover some key concepts to get you started with retopology. And in part 2, we did some exercises to understand how to control the flow of our quads and edges. Part 3 will be all about polygon management. With that said, let's get to it. Hello everyone, I'm Nemesis from Ngon85, welcome to my channel. In this video, we'll be talking about polygon or quad management. The idea is to learn how to manage our number of quads and understand why this is important. I'll be demonstrating different examples of how to reduce the quad count making some cards with edges over a plane. You can find online many of these cards, which I call them formulas or recipes, to manage and reduce the poly count, but it is always good to see how it's actually done, so let's get to work. In 3D modeling, as I explained in part 1, retopology is the process of creating a new optimized mesh for a high resolution model, often to improve performance or prepare for animation. A core part of this process is strategically reducing the polygon or quad count in areas with fewer details while maintaining and increasing quads in areas that require more geometry detail, such as the face of a character. Why to manage quad density? When working on retopology, especially for character models, different areas require different levels of details. An example of detail areas are the face, hands and feet. The face has complex features like the eyes, nose, mouth, and cheekbones that need a high level of control over the geometry for realistic deformation during animation. More quads here give you finer control over shape and allow for smoother deformation. Simpler areas like the top of the head, scalp, neck are simpler and do not usually require intricate deformation. Here, reducing the quad density helps keep the model lightweight without compromising detail where it's needed. Reducing quads in low detail areas isn't just about minimizing polygons. It's also about creating smooth transitions between areas of high and low detail. This requires careful planning using techniques like edge loop control to guide the quad flow to naturally reduce density without creating sharp transitions. The placement of poles, which are vertices with three, five, or more edges connected. A strategically placed poles help transition between high and low density areas by redirecting the edge flow. In part two, we cover edge loop control and poles in case you want to watch it if you haven't. For a character model, you may start with a higher quad density around the facial features, especially near the eyes and mouth. Then, gradually, reduce quad density as you approach to the skull. This lets you keep a clean, manageable topology that performs well in animation and shading without unnecessary detail in low impact areas. This approach balances quality and performance, making your model more efficient to render, easier to animate, and lighter to work with, especially in game engines or real-time applications. For this part of the video series, we are going to be working with polygon management. I've activated the screencast keys, but as usual, I will try to call the keys I press out loud. For the exercise in this video, you will need to enable the native Blender add-on F2. So go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, search for the F2, and check the box. This add-on is good to fill faces quickly. I'm moving to top view pressing 7 on the numpad or using the pie menu with the tilde key. Shift A to add a plane. The idea of this polygon management is to do a reduction of quads. This is a skill required when doing retopology and later I will show you an example of this. Just as a heads up, it took me some time to understand and even more to be able to implement the polygon management to real models. So please, bear in mind that the same may happen to you and my only recommendation is to practice. This way, when you encounter this scenario to apply this, you will be able to do so. We are going to be reducing quads from a higher to a lower number. 
You may not need to use all of these examples in a project, but I have found some of them to be very useful, like reducing from 4 to 2 quads, 3 to 1, and 2 to 1, etc. With the plane selected, I press Tab to move to Edit Mode. With Ctrl R, I will add a loop in the middle, and one more across the X axis. In Face Mode, we can see that now I have four faces. The idea is to manage the quad in a way that I can reduce them from two faces to one. The first thing I will do is to select this edge and by pressing X we can dissolve it, but it is always better to learn the shortcuts, so just press Ctrl X. Now I can press K to select the knife tool and I will connect these two corners and press Enter to confirm. I will move now to Vertex Mode, remember you also have the options at the top. I select these two vertices, do a right mouse click and select Subdivide. With this, now we have four vertices in here and four on the other side. To test this, I can run loops since they only run through quads. Now I can select this edge and press E to extrude and we end up coming from two quads to one. If you want to further check your object, there is a free add-on called Analyzed Mesh. You will find the link in the description. When analyzing the mesh, it tells me that it has 5 faces. I have no angles, which is good, so we have achieved the desired outcome. Having completed the first card, we can move to the next one. Let's do the same as before by adding a plane and going to Edit Mode. With Ctrl R and rolling the mouse wheel, I will add two edge loops and will add one along the X axis. Now we have three faces that we want to reduce to one. I will select the middle edge, press G then Y to move it along the Y axis. I can now select these two edges and with the F2 add on enable, I can press F to fill. To make it more clear, I extrude with E, and as you can see, now I have only one face. Again, using the Analyze Mesh add-on, I can check that there are only quads and no angles. Quickly, we have managed to turn three faces into one. Let's move these planes and continue with the next card. Same as before, with Shift A, I will add a plane and move to edit mode. Control R to add a loop cut and roll the mouse wheel to add more cuts. Same as before, we will have three faces, but this time we will turn them into two instead of one. With Control R, I begin by adding a loop. I select these two edges and press Control X to dissolve them. Next is to move to Vertex Mode and select these two vertices at the bottom of the plane. Press M for the Merge menu and click on At Center. As you can see, if I now press Ctrl R, I have a loop that runs through the mesh because there are only quads. We can quickly analyze it and we have no angles or tries. To better show the result, I can take these edges and press E to extrude, and just like that we went from 3 faces down to 2. And if you remember the first card from 2 to 1, that is something we can apply to this one to reduce it even further. Again, after analyzing the mesh, we have no angles or tries. Then I can run a test loop and check if this one is flowing throughout the plane. I just quickly wanted to show you this, so I will delete these faces to leave it as 3 to 2 card and move to the next exercise. Let's add a new plane and go to edit mode. With Ctrl R, I will add a loop and roll the mouse wheel to add a total of 3 cuts and do a left click to confirm. This way we end up with 4 faces. We will turn these 4 faces into 2. I begin by selecting these 2 edges, then press G and Y to move along the Y axis. With them still selected, 
I will select the two edges by the side and press F to fill. Pressing K to get the knife tool and starting from the middle vertex, then press A to make the knife go straight, click at the bottom edge and hit enter. Just like that, I can take these two edges and extrude them, and now we see that we came from four faces to two. I analyze the mesh, and of course, we have no angles. Alright, we can move to the next card. I will add the plane, but this time, we will add four loop cuts to have five faces and reduce them to three. I will quickly add two more loops along the Y axis for clarity. In vertex mode, I will select this vert and hold shift to select the next one. Then press M for the merge menu and click on at last. Because I have the machine tools, I can take the vertices and press 1 to do the same operation quickly. The next thing I will do is to add a loop in here because if we analyze the mesh, we see that we have two triangles, but when adding this loop, we turn them into quads. To complete this, I will select the edges at the bottom and extrude them. And this is done, we have turned five faces into three. Let's move the cards so we can work on the next one. Let's create a plane with five cuts to have six faces. This is similar to what we did with the 4 to 2 card, but dragging more edges. I will take this edge, and while holding control, I will click on this one to select them all in the shortest path. Now I press G followed by Y to bring them up, then I can take these two edges while having the rest selected and press F to fill. Pressing K for the knife tool, I will add a cut from the three edges in the middle to the bottom edge. I do a left click to confirm, followed by a right click to move to the next point while still having the knife tool selected, then press enter at the end to confirm. Now I can take these edges at the bottom and extrude them to reveal our new faces. We analyze it and there are no quads or tries, and I can roll loops with no issues throughout the plane. From here, I can reduce it more using what we learned from the previous cards. Like this, we have come from 6 to 4, then to 2, and finally to 1 face. The last two cards I want to show you are done using a diamond face, and no worries, you will see what I mean soon enough. The reason why I'm showing you this is because in the next part of the video, I will be using this type of reduction and I don't want to confuse you, but also for you to learn other ways to approach this. I will press Shift A to add a plane and go to Edge Selection mode. I will scale it on X axis so it's more clear what I do. With Ctrl R and scrolling up the mouse wheel, I will add 7 loop cuts. Now I should have 8 faces. I will add one more cut in the middle. I move to Vertex mode to show you this diamond stuff. I will select these vertices, leaving the ones by the corner unselected. Pressing E, then Y, I will extrude them. Now I can select the vertices in pairs and press M for the merge menu. This pie you see me using is from the Better Pies add-on, and this is something I'm just testing. I will leave the link in the description. I will select Merge at Center and do the same with the other two vertices. I take these two vertices at the center and move them along the Y axis. I can now select the four vertices and press F to fill the face, and you can see the diamond I was talking about. The last thing pending to be done is to complete the rest of the faces. Like this, using these diamonds, we have reduced the faces from 8 to 4. 
I will repeat the same but from 5 phases to 2 and will be the same using the diamond so I will speed up this part. Understanding these polygon management techniques will be very beneficial when doing retopology because as I said before, you will have areas with more density in which you will require to have more polygons but in others don't, so you want to be able to manage this accordingly. Let's move to the next part of the video so you can better see why this is so important. Here I'm doing the retopology of a hand. And quickly to show you and for you to understand the concepts covering this video, I have started by adding loops of 10 quads to the wrist, because normally when I'm doing retopology, this is the number of polygons I will have in every loop of the entire arm. But when working with the hand, some areas will be more dense since they need more details, especially the fingers. When I got to this point, we can see that I have 32 edges which I will need to manage by controlling the edge flow while reducing the poly count so when I get to the wrist, I can make the connection. Here I'm using the diamonds I show you in the last two cards. The video is time lapsed because the idea is just to show you the application of the polygon reduction, but don't worry since I'm planning to drop this handwritten topology as a separate video. Here I added two 5 poles to change the flow of the loop and to help me later with the reduction. At this point of the retopology, I have 20 edges, so in this area I will make another reduction using the diamonds. In this part, I reduce the count and at the same time, reroute the loop so this one stays in the hand without having to travel through the whole model. As you can see, I now have 10 faces, which is what I was looking for to have a good connection to the wrist. This way we have come from 32 faces all the way down to 10 having a greater density in the areas in which detail is more needed like the fingers and less in areas like the top of the hand and the wrist. I hope this example helps you to understand why it is important to be able to control and manage your poly count. And that's it guys for part 3 of this video series. If you enjoy the content, please consider to like, share and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions to improve the channel, please let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you for watching and see you soon.